Welcome to Element 5. It's our pleasure to bring you on this virtual tour of our factory to show you how our CLT is made. Our St. Thomas operation is FSC Chain of Custody certified, and we are proud to use Ontario SPF lumber in our manufacturing process. Before we process the lumber we receive, we sort, restack, and separate the boards with kiln sticks to enable proper airflow around every board before bringing it into our conditioning kiln. The kiln can remove or add moisture, and also maintain the moisture level at our desired 12% for as long as needed, which is a key advantage over a traditional drying kiln. Because different products have different requirements, we segregate everything based on size, grade, and species of wood, and whether or not it is FSC certified. It takes the kiln less than three days to bring the lumber to the optimum moisture content for CLT manufacturing. Depending on production throughput requirements, there's no rush to bring it into the building. We can use the kiln as a waiting room since we don't want the lumber to sit outside the kiln for very long prior to manufacturing, since this can impact moisture levels. All inputs are digitally coded and our enterprise resource planning software dictates what we bring out to the line and when. When we scan lumber into the system, our software verifies we've loaded the right lamb stock before processing it out. Lumber resources within the system are allocated based on visual as well as structural properties. For example, if engineering designs a panel or beam that requires machine stress rated lumber, we'll have MSR wood set aside for that product. CLT panels use different wood for different layers. Number two or better is usually used for internal layers, and number one or better is reserved for the top layers. When a panel surface will be exposed, the species we're using is also a consideration. Our production equipment was manufactured by Lednek of Slovenia, a global leader in CLT production equipment. This is the beginning of our Lednek line. The Lednek production equipment takes up about 60% of our 137,000 square foot building. This equipment at the start is the infeed conveyor. We generally run 2x6 lumber in 10 to 16 foot lengths depending on supply chain availability. The system raises the entire bundle of conditioned lumber up and the vacuum section pulls it in layer by layer. As the layers enter the process, an arm swings across the surface of the boards and pulls the kiln sticks off into a collection bin so that they can be reused. Once the kiln sticks are cleared, the boards are separated and squared up. The boards pass through two alignment stations and two operators, one on each side of the line, will inspect the boards for quality before they are finger jointed. There are restrictions on how close a knot can be to the finger joint, so the operators pull ends out that need to be cut, adjusting the board position to make sure the knots are trimmed off. They may also reject a board entirely if there is visual damage such as a break or something else that got through the initial quality process. At this point, there is also a moisture check and moisture readers determine that each board is at the 12% moisture content required, plus or minus 3%. If a board is outside of that window, it will be rejected in this zone. Boards rejected by the moisture reader are resorted and stacked to go back into the conditioning kiln. Once they've passed through inspection, the boards get tipped up 90 degrees onto their short sides and inserted into a set of spring-loaded clamping fingers that securely hold the boards through the finger jointing process. Immediately after the first set of fingers are cut, an adhesive is sprayed onto that end of the board. The board continues to move through the process, and the finger cuts are made on the opposite end of the board. This time, a hardener is applied to the fingers. We use a two-part epoxy so that when the two ends come into contact, they bond together immediately. The curing time for the two-part epoxy is about 10 minutes, so making sure this section of the line is operating continuously is critical. After the boards are cut and glued, they are flipped back onto their flat side and put into a metering conveyor. Basically, as the boards are going down, the board that is behind the stack gets sped up so that the ends are pushed together. The finger jointing line has the ability to produce 120 meters of lamb stock per minute. A core strength of the lead neck line is the finger jointing technology. The finger jointer is a 50 ton press that operates in two segments. The first part holds the board moving at about 2 meters per second, and the second segment is a floating press which applies the pressure necessary to join the boards together, creating a continuous length of finger jointed wood. The orange device that is in motion is the flying saw. 
it speeds up to meet the speed of the wood, quickly clamps it, and then cuts it to the length that we need, returning then quickly to the home position to prepare for the next cut. The flow of production is controlled by a single computer. The software that runs the line is called Crossland Manager, and it has a based software pack that Leadneck customizes for every CLT line that they produce. When we enter an order into the system and specify the size of the panels that we want to produce, as well as the composition of the layers, the Crossland Manager determines the most optimal way to process all the billets. The Crossland Manager dictates the length of every board, which can range anywhere from 8 meters to 16 meters in length. The boards are then cut to within a millimeter tolerance and proceed to the curing zone where they are grouped together into what will eventually become a layer. Our cure zone is three conveyors stacked on top of each other, and the multiple levels enable us to store material as part of the optimized workflow. For example, the control software may process all the visual grade lumber for the top surfaces of three billets, and then do an optimal changeover to process the number two grade material for the interior layers once the visual layers are complete. Our versatile line can work with different lumber dimensions, anywhere from 2x4, which is the smallest board we can process, up to 2x12. We can make a 16 meter by 3.5 meter panel in under 30 minutes, and we can process 44,000 cubic meters of wood per year across two shifts. Our entire line, from lumber introduction to outfeed, is completed by the Leadneck line, although there are other elements that are integrated into our process, such as our lumber conditioning kiln, our dust collector, and our CNC equipment. Everything is digitally tagged and captured in packets of information that we track through the software so that we have traceability at all times. We know, for example, the exact time something entered into the curing process and also what time it came out of the curing process. Every time material is released from one area to another, the digital tags are moved to the next section. This is very helpful because it gives us the ability to know what we're working with at any given time. If we have a glue issue that causes a brief delay, we can still ensure that everything receives the proper curing time. Additionally, if we need to make an extra piece because something breaks further downstream, we can track where that extra piece is and make sure that it's being delivered to the right section at the right time. Another crucial part of our process that isn't shown in this video, but occurs after the finger joint curing station, is planing. Our planer typically removes 1.5 millimeters of material off each side of a board to square up all the edges, but it has the ability to remove as much as 20 millimeters of material with a single pass. Precision planing is important to ensure optimal glue adhesion. We don't want any gaps between the boards. Our quality assurance process at this station is very rigorous. Every time we do a dimensional change, we do a six point inspection of the boards, two points in the middle and two points on each end and all six points have to be within 0.2 millimeters of one another to ensure proper glue adhesion. Immediately after planing, the boards are edge glued and pressed together in the Z press. We apply two or three beads of hot melt glue that keeps the boards together during the next part of the process, as well as two beads of white glue that minimize gaps from opening up between the lamella as the wood starts to dry. This step in our process ensures that we produce a visually superior panel. Once edge glued, the boards are cut to whatever length is required for the transverse layers. The longitudinal boards are already the correct width and length. To manage and store the layers, we have a four stacked conveyor system that has 21 slots which allows us to effectively have a queue of 21 longitudinal layers at any one time. So if we are making a five layer panel, we can have the layers necessary for four panels in the conveyor system. Here we see a finished layer moving toward the layup station. 10 minutes or more before layup, we spray the board with a primer that assists the adhesive. Once we've sprayed the primer on the layer, we have approximately 8 hours to execute the glue adhesion before we would have to prime the boards again. The system ensures that we don't prime a layer unless it will be laid up into a final panel within those 8 hours. The basic principle of cross laminated timber is that a complete panel is made up of an odd number of layers where each layer is perpendicular to the adjacent layers. Here at the layup station, we have two gantries that lay the panels up. The gantry on the right handles the longitudinal layers, and the one on the left handles the transverse layers. The table in the middle moves back and forth. The conveyor on the right moves the proper panel down from the four-stack conveyor system, and the gantry, with a Joulin vacuum system, picks it up and places it. 
Once we've placed the first longitudinal layer on the table, it rolls out and has glue applied to one half on the way out and then glue applied to the other half on the way back. Then the gantry on the left picks up and places the transverse layer. This process is repeated until the panel is complete. This can be either three, five, seven, or nine layers. The ambient humidity in the building has to be maintained above 50% for the glue application, so there's a moisturizing system in the plant. There are also spray nozzles, which apply a fine mist of water onto the glue during the layup to ensure adhesion. Typically in our process, we're using spruce pine fir lumber, usually premium and number two grade. We could also use number three for interior layers, but we don't do that at this time. When we make the transverse layers, they're stacked and queued up, ready for the layup. We queue either eight, 10, or 12 cross layers, depending on the total number needed to achieve the length to match the longitudinal layer. After layup, the panel is loaded into the press on the platen with rollers. There is a servo forced ram that comes in and clamps the ends together, then the sides come in, and then the entire overhead section in eight specific platens lowers the airbags, which are deployed to a pressure between 73 and 110 PSI. The airbags ensure uniform pressure at all points. We use a pure bond adhesive from Henkel, which has an open time of 20 minutes. This means we have 20 minutes to build all the layers of the panel and get it into the press from the time the first layer of glue is applied. The cure time of the glue is 2.5 times the open time, so we press our panels at full pressure for 50 minutes. The charging of the press counts as part of the open time. It's only when we're under full pressure that we actually get the curing time. So we pre-charge our tanks to 260 PSI, so that when we open them to the press, we equalize out at the necessary pressure quickly. One of the most critical things with a line of this size is safety. We have 11 safety zones throughout the line which allow us to go into different sections of the equipment safely while still operating the other areas. Overhead fencing and vertical fencing provide protection and allow things over the walking areas to be operating. Every station has an emergency stop that is coordinated with all the other stations on the line. Once a panel is pressed, we pass it through an IMEA's drum sander. We can sand up to two millimeters off per pass. Our goal is to get within one millimeter or 2% of the thickness of the overall panel. We change our sanding belts at regular intervals and use anywhere from an 80 to 100 grit belt. Everything is tied into the dust collector. The opening on the sander can be as high as 380 millimeters and we can sand as wide as 3.2 meters in a single pass. After sanding, we have a transverse conveyor that takes the panels to another bay if needed at which point we have two 20-ton cranes that can work independently or in tandem to load the panels into our SCM CNC machine for finishing. Our CNC has an overhead five access bridge. On this CNC, we've got up to 880 millimeter diameter saw blades, as well as a chainsaw, routers, and several other attachments that enable us to make any cut that we need to. The main process here is to cut the four edges of the panel square, cut out the panels based on how they've been nested together, and then to put in any details that our engineering department has included in the design, such as pre-drilling holes and access slots, or performing cuts for mechanical and electrical openings, windows, doors, etc. We have a total of three CNC machines in the shop. Two are for CLT, and we have a third CNC dedicated for glue lamp processing. Our process is that every part of our drawings is done in either Rhino or CAD works in full 3D. When our engineering team finishes the design, we have every whole slot and cutout in the entire building. They break that detail down into individual models. Those models are then translated into BTL files that are sent to the CNC programmers. We don't even use 2D drawings for the majority of our parts. We just execute to the 3D model that's been made. After CNC machining, we have the last stop on our tour. This is the section of the factory dedicated to value-added production and staging. It's here that any special coatings our clients order can be factory applied and connections hardware pre-installed. This is also where we would make our clips and box panels and where our finished products are wrapped and prepared for delivery. Thank you for joining us. We hope you found the tour interesting and informative. 
please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions or you would like to discuss your next mass timber project.